Uh, we're glad to know you're still there and watching us. We're now joined by Mukta Mohammed, an international finance and economics analyst who is talking to us from the United States. Good morning and welcome. At least good morning from Nigeria and welcome to the program. It's morning here yeah, too. Good okay. morning. But very early morning. Earlier morning. Very early morning. Yes. It's like when you, when you go out and then you come back in around 1 a.m. and your wife asks you, why are you coming back so late? And you're saying, I'm very early. Right, Mukta. <laughs> okay, well, uh, uh, today in Nigeria, all the things we're talking about is inflation. We're talking about the cost of living that has soared to unimaginable proportions. And now there is this worrisome thing that we always hear from the government that Nigeria spends over 99% revenue to service debts. As inflation bites harder, we're looking at this why is it even this way 99 percent to service debts what is left for us to enjoy i i say so let's start to get your analysis on the fact that we do this as a country before we move on to the to other matters well um, unfortunately it, it just happened for the past eight years we saw this happening over and over again it, it didn't used to be like this and um, sometimes i jokingly tell people that from a country that has so much surplus in 1999 that at a point they will say the the ministries and parastators will, will not be able to spend their budgetary allocation they have to return it to the federation account to a country that cannot even afford to pay salary rather than to borrow either borrowing from the cbn or borrowing from um, other other means to be able to be it's just um the past eight years have been one of the most disastrous years of our, of, of our economy so um i, I tell people that sometimes it, it's hard it hard when it starts it's messy at the middle like where we are now it's very messy but at the end sometimes if we have the right policy it could be gorgeous for now i think um the present administration have a lot of work to do why you are not hearing so much complaint is because uh, um, they are the ones that they, they, their own party was the one in power before they came in. Otherwise, we'll be hearing those excuses that we normally hear if a new administration come in and taking over from a new a new party. So for me, um, we are where we are today because um, the the, uh, the former administration just thought never thought outside the box, just kept boring, boring until the last day of their leaving office. They were still borrowing, and we're even planning to borrow for the new administration. <laughs> okay, but do you think the, the, the economic policies so far by this present administration are the things that you project? Because you just said uh, it could get messy at the middle, but it could be rosy if the policies are the right ones. Do you think so far uh, there is some level of confidence that it's going to get better uh, in the, maybe the next six months? Um, I think it's hard, as we started, uh, we already, it's hard, and that's why you are seeing what you are seeing now, a lot of hardship in the land, um, based on some of the policies. Um, I said it in one of your programs, it's like uh, you are supposed to have a surgical operation maybe 10 years ago, and you didn't have it, you decided to have it 10 years after, the pain will be much comparable to when you would have had it before. So definitely we are in that place that we are feeling the pains because of some of these policy decisions we are seeing now without the policy decisions that should have been taken long time ago. The only person that attempted to take those decisions was President uh, Goodluck Jonathan. And yet at that time, these current people that are now in government oppose it for political reasons and they are taking that same decision now. So it's going to be hard now. Is it going to be a mid messy in the middle? And that's what we are seeing now. It's getting messy. People are complaining. It's, it's hard. But guess what? They are putting up the structure. Now, for us to get that gorgeous uh, end, they must come up with the foundation. You can put up a structure like an architect. You do a drawing that this is what the house will look like. Then you need to start building. And you need to have a strong foundation so that you'll be able to complete the building. Now, what are those strong foundations? Those strong, strong foundations are one, who are your cabinet members, and two, your policy. Are they geared towards providing employment? Now, capitalism is, is, over, is, is, is about two things. Capitalism is all about um, democracy and prosperity. And now, if your policies are not driven towards providing job 
for the middle class and the lower class and prosperity for the upper class, then your policy will fail in capitalism. So what we are seeing in Nigeria is full capitalism on, on, on play. Market forces determining what will happen, government coming up with policies that are going to strangle the people at the beginning, maybe at the end, they could be light on the tunnel. So there's a lot of things that are going on. In the next six months, I expect that when the minister comes, to begin to put foundation into the structures, and then we'll begin to see those results little by little. But if you tell me what are the right policies they have taken, first subsidy must go, is the right policy, it's hard for us now. Second right policy, we float in the Naira, fine. But you must have liquidity to make sure the Naira is stable. You must attract investors. Those are the foundations. These are the structures. What are the foundations? The foundation is that you must attract investors. What are the foundations? You remove subsidy. What are the foundations for you to begin? You must make sure that those money are usually spent towards providing employment and social investment also, and then infrastructure for your people. If you get it right with what you have done by and by this policy, then prosperity will naturally come. Uh, my people say that uh, a dog that would be a good hunting dog would be known well as still a puppy. And this administration may be young, but there are some things that will give you an idea of what is to come. Now, in a situation where, for instance, uh, we're talking about giving palliatives when fuel subsidy has been removed, and nothing has been said about making sure our refineries work. Some people even said that uh, a state of emergency should have been declared in that sector and uh, the government should have made sure that, okay, they tell us that in the next three months, in the next six months, our refineries will be working. So even if we're not paying subsidy, there's a possibility that fuel uh, price will come drastically down. They didn't do that. And it took an NGO, it, it took a, a, an organization to talk to the president to declare, to say in clear terms, how he's going to fight corruption because he has not said that. He didn't respond to that. And some other people are also talking about the fact that security has made prosperity in Nigeria to be stagnant. We're not moving anywhere towards being a prosperous nation because of the kind of uh, security we have or insecurity that we have in our country. And so far, there hasn't been a definite plan that people will know how this administration is going to tackle uh, security except for the changing of the service chiefs. So is this puppy showing us that it's going to be a hunting dog when it re actually grows up? Uh, let me tell you something. Um, you hit the nail on two incidents. You talk about security. I totally agree with you that uh, when it comes to security, um, for now, I think the, 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 the ministers or the, the service chiefs uh, are still getting their footing on the ground. Unfortunately, they are not just new service chiefs. Some of them have been in the forefront of the fight for insurgency, especially the current chief of army staff and the current chief of defense staff. I think they know what to do. Even the chief of naval staff and the chief of air staff. We just need to give them time to recheck those um, security apparatus. I believe strongly that we will achieve something security-wise, especially with oil production and also with um, the southeast, which for me is one area that the president must pride himself to have solved that problem, either through the carrot and stick approach. For the Northeast, I think for now we are seeing a grief right, grief yard and um, uh, uh, peace, um, even if there are scaffolds of Boko Haram incident here and there, but you know that um, the military are fully taking control of that spice and also the uh, ECOWAS sub-regional forces are working on that space. So we are we are not seeing the kind of um, things we used to see before, whereby they say um, military men are killed and, you know, what I think for that. For corruption, I, you know, I, I said it, in, I think it was when I was on your program during the election, uh, election campaign that um, of the three candidates, even the whole three candidates, nobody said the plan they had for fighting corruption in Nigeria. None of them. Even Peter B, Atikwa, Bubakam, Bolatinu, nobody talked about corruption. Everybody was just talking about what they would do to the economy, what they would do to the economy. And, I, and when Peter B was asked, he said, look, when you have the price structure, corruption will generally die. So definitely, um, if you look at uh, Bolatinu and the people that are surrounding him, you say that uh, corruption has lost its battle already since the removal of uh, 
the EFCC chairman. We don't even hear anything about uh, EFCC again. What we hear is just an um, arresting of Yahoo Yahoo boys while the big criminals are walking the street free. So uh, I, I'm not surprised about that. Now, for subsidy, it's not in the business of government to be in business. I've said it over and over. Those refineries are also these refineries. Any part in the world, you don't see big refineries like that any longer. Remember, even the, 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 those that build the refineries are not even no more. They are no more in business. So definitely, that refinery is a, is a, is a cash drill. Um, to me, Pray Silver, the former minister for state for petroleum, during the Buhari administration, told us that that refinery will start for the coal refinery will work in January. He never did. The, he never see the light of the day. So definitely, and now he is contesting to be the governor of Isa State. He have abandoned the refinery project. I, I wish some people by Isa would have asked him that question to to see whether that kind of person can be their governor. So we. Yeah, I think the only thing I'm, I'm saying about the mobile subsidy is like the, the president have finally said it was not in his speech. He just decided to be emotional with it because they must have been palliative before you come up with start strategy like this. And when we're talking about palliatives, I hate this sense whereby they say palliatives is all about bringing transportation, all about bringing food, all about giving people 8,000, 5,000, all about worker salary. Those are temporary palliatives. When you are doing an economic palliative, you must look at the long term of, 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 of those palliatives. And one of the best palliatives you can give at this moment is the area of creating jobs and giving tax brackets, especially for the civil service and also the informal sector. You begin to try to see how you can reduce their tax burden on them so that they cannot get, they, they won't be sacking their. their staff like what we are seeing now. A lot of companies will be doing lay down because lay off because. The economy is just is stagnant as it stands now. No matter the policy they are trying to put in, they won't see those results in the next one to two months. So definitely, I think you need to begin to look at putting more energy in the hands of Nigerians. How much can Nigeria earn? How can you increase not just their salary? Because if you increase their salary to 100,000 and they are still paying the same amount of tax, where cost of goods and services have gone up by over 50%, it's all about a cycle. You will still come back again to that cycle. So you must do something structural that will have a lasting impact in the short term and in the long term. We increase their earning ability and then the economy can move forward. Nigeria is a consumer based economy. So once you don't have that resources, to grow a communal based economy which has to do with liquidity, that economy will naturally continue to steadily or naturally die. Okay, but right now we're talking, just finally now uh, before we wrap up, we're talking about the fact that uh, Nigeria spends 99% revenue on uh, servicing of debts. What do you think the solution would be so that this cycle will be broken? We can't keep spending 99% to service debts. What can we do to get more money than we spend on debt? No, 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 most of those debts are based on infrastructure. And some of this infrastructure can actually generate revenue for themselves. Why didn't we do that? Why didn't we just put this infrastructure as collateral and we build and operate PPP like it's done in other developed nations of the world? Why didn't we do that? That is one way we can go about reducing our debt body. Secondly, we must attract genuine investors. I'm not talking about full investors. I'm talking about genuine investors, foreign direct investors to come in and also begin to, to help us grow our economy in, in the sense that they will come in with FX and that will bring stability in our exchange rate and that also will reduce our debt profile. As it stands today, why you're seeing that 99% of debt is because of the, int, the exchange rate from a government uh, rate of about 400 and 18 to a, to, a, to, a, to a market determining rate of 803 definitely you will see those numbers going up. So we need to begin to think outside the box. Most of this infrastructure, you look at power, they can actually be able to pay up themselves. You look at roads, you look at railway. If we decide to go what is done globally, the PPP way, then we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be out of the wood sooner than we think. I mean, in real estate, and everything here is even in the developed economy, like it's PPP driven. There's nothing that is done by government. Government just create the enabling environment, keep them the structure, and then allow them to run smoothly. But government 
must be a good regulator. And when you are talking about being a good regulator, it's not about cutting corners. Doing what I do to Mr. A must apply to Mr. B. It's not that you give money to Mr. A to build refinery and Mr. B are telling to sort for his money himself. Government own idea is to create the level in the level playing field and also make sure that they are highly in control and let the private sector drive the economy. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, having said uh, PPP and all that, and in inviting or attracting investors, I'd like to I'd like to get your description of the economic climate in Nigeria. Is it attractive enough for these people, these investors, genuine in investors, to come, or there are things that need to be done? If they are, what are those things uh, that need to be done for people to be attracted? Number one, uh, when an economy is going through a downtime. That's the right time for investors want to come because they'll make more profits. So I'll just give you an example. When we didn't have telecom, there was no power. The lack of uh, the telecom companies came in and they, most of them, by the revenue they made, they've been able to expand in other countries, even in Africa. So definitely when the economy is going through challenges, that's when investors see the gold mine to come. Now, so that is what is attracting a lot of people to Nigeria, especially the consumer uh, sector of the Nigeria economy because of our population. Definitely is attracting a lot of people. What is those things that we need to put? Number one, we have to get the rule of law. Rule of law is the whole idea. Once you don't have the rule of law, nobody wants to come to your country. The a situation whereby a case will run for six years, for ten years. Nobody wants to come in such. So we must put get them rule of law. Then intellectual property, protection of intellectual property. We'll talk about copyright. People don't want to come to an environment whereby intellectual properties are not protected. They want to come to an environment whereby they know that their intellectual property is protected. So all that also will go down to rule of law. So the first thing is rule of law. And then if they come in this rule of law, then they will build the amenity. They will build the infrastructure to grow the economy because they, at the long run, it's going to be a win-win situation for them. So for me, if there's one thing we need to put in place to attract investors now, we need to make sure that there is rule of law and there is value for intellectual properties. Mm. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Mukhtar Mohammed, for coming on the program. And sorry we had to wake you up so early. Thank you. My pleasure, always. My pleasure, always. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, uh, that was Mukhtar Mohammed, international finance and economics uh, analyst. Uh, he was talking to us from the United States, and uh, that is where we wrap it up on, uh, or this is where we wrap it up today on the show. Remember the, vo the words of uh, John Lennon. He says, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. We hope that you remember that all of the time. Live your life and be a good citizen of Nigeria. My name is Nyamukuru. Thanks for being here.